you say that there is not a psychological I, therefore my mind sets up, the confusion is that because there is a physical I, I keep thinking that I'm someone. The question is, is the physical I also an illusion? Does That's not an illusion. That's there. That's an expression of God in the physical form. If you identify with the body, you're going to be afraid of death, aren't you? Because you've called the body me? You're not your body at all. But, as you pointed out, we have this single one body, so we think that we're one single separate individual. God has expressed himself in billions of ways, including the fact that we're all different here in this room. All the trees are different, all the blades of grass are different. That's simply an expression of God in time. In time. And God changes the way he presents himself physically endlessly. He puts an end to this physical body, to that physical body, to that tree. God is expressing himself, but this is not an individual self apart from God. God is expressing himself in time for a while, then ceases to express himself in that body, in this body, and in that tree. But if I identify with this body, then I say, I will die when this goes, which is thought operating, saying, not seeing, thought not seeing that you're simply a temporary, temporary impermanent expression of the all in the body. You think that you're in, indeed separate and unique in yourself according to your memories, which you are not. It's the fear of coming to the end of the, of the body that causes, causes fear because I've called it me. I think that I am this. I'll tell you, it's long, hard work to begin to even disassociate ourselves from identification with this, this very familiar face that we see every day when we look in the mirror. I call that me. It's not you at all. Thought says it's you. Memory says it's you. Because every time you look in the mirror, you see the familiar. You don't want the familiar to go. You've taken it as me, as you, which it is not at all. Anything in time simply is in time. You don't die? How can you die when you never were born? <laughs> the idea of you was born. If you let the idea that you were born die, while you're still in the, in the human body, you would no longer identify with it. Remember how many times we've said we must die right now? If I die to the idea that I'm my physical body, that is death, right there. The death of thought is death. Now what is there more to fear? What are you going to be afraid of? You've died while you're alive. The thought is born but the birth of the thought is not the birth of you at all. It's the birth of a certain physical body. You don't know who you are until you're given a name, Tom Jones, Mary Smith. Ah, that's who I am, Tom Smith and Mary Jones. That's the beginning of identification. This particular face, hair, body is, is Tom Jones. That one is Mary Smith. I'm separate. No, you're not. You put labels here and labels there and thinking that the word is the, the real separation. If you see a label as a label, you're free of it. If you don't take the label as real, if you say I consciously, you don't fall into the trap. But we always say it unconsciously because we're thinking instead of understanding. It, I'll tell you now, this, this may be, this may hit some of you, and this is an instruction to every one of us. Boy, I'll tell you, it'd scare most people out of their wits and never come back again. We are all instructed to die consciously in the physical body. It's a marvelous, ex I think it would be a marvelous experience to watch, watch yourself die. I'm, go I'm going to. You know, unless it's an accident or something like that. If I know that I'm dying in the hospital bed or at home or wherever, I'm going to just have a lot of fun watching myself die. <laughs>